I want to go to this old idea of the, uh, the three layers of life. And um, to me, it's just one of those philosophical things, you know, I found once. And I like it because it gives us a way to view the world. And mythology is often about threes, um, you know, because you have mythology is about stories and narration. So you have beginning, middle and end. But then when I was a Catholic kid going to church, it was God the Father, God the Son, and Virgin Mary Mother. So you get the, the threes are part of things that are mythical often. Third time is a charm, is a, a, a notion that comes out of fairy tales. Um, but also uh, creativity. The third thing comes from the polarization of the first two things. And so it's a rich, rich thing. And you can s often shape something b by giving it three parts. So this is the three uh, layers of life. And um, the first layer is what you would call daily life or common life with its limitations, its rules, its regulations, even with its um, kind of da daily weather. Um, and, and that's the world of common expectations, uh, the wor world of normal so-called behaviors and even common courtesies and civil courtesies. Um, and that's the first world. Uh, it's the world of fact and the world of measurement. Um, but that world is increasingly cracked now and falling apart. There is no normal weather anymore. Anybody you talk to is telling you about strange weather things happening wherever they happen to live. Um, that the normal systems and patterns of weather that people mostly knew are now altered severely by climate crisis. So that's one thing that's happening on the first layer of life. Um, normal behaviors are now disturbed by extreme patterns and extreme beliefs and, and uh, conspiracy theories. So that what was normal is now thrown up in the air and turned upside down, whether it's politics and even economics has extremes now, that where things swing in much wider you know, ranges. And so the first level, which would be the normal and the common level, is now cracking and, uh, and being disturbed at the level of nature as well as at the level of culture. And polarization is one of those dynamics where the first layer used to be more common courtesy. And now you can be in a very tense, polarized situation just by saying the wrong word. So the first layer is now disrupted. And when the first layer is disrupted, what happens is the second layer enters the world more fully. And another way to call refer to the second layer is a fall from grace, just playing with the word grace. The second layer is the broken ground of dysfunction, is the territory of uh, anxiety and sadness and fear. It's the place of betrayal, where information is confused by disinformation, where delusions and conspiracies flourish, the place where authorities abuse power and the shadows of life continue to grow, the second layer. Um, I hope you get the sense of that. Um, in many, when, when culture is more stable, um, what happens is things divide and the first layer uh, becomes the people that are doing well and the second layer become the people that are the outcasts or that are the lower caste or something. And what's happened now, I think all the first layer things have cracked and the second layer things have poured in where the world goes through upheaval, the shadows are more present, the, uh, the otherwise inner hidden conflicts are played out in front of everybody. That's second layer. So we mostly live in the second layer now. If we see that second layer as simply a fall from grace with no possible return, then we're starting to get pulled in to the, the heaviness of the anxieties and fears, and we begin to lose our sense that uh, each life has purpose and meaning, and that's happening to a lot of people now. Um, and so it becomes really important to know something about the third layer. First layer, basic life, when things are going well. Second layer, 
all of the heavy, dark, conflicted, polarized, troubled, anxious parts of life uh, that happen all the time and sometimes become much more pronounced. And then the third level is the realm of uh, what some people call universal love and understanding. It's the ground of interconnectedness and the sense of community with all beings. Um, that's third layer stuff. The third layer is the place of forgiveness, peace, gratitude, and grace. The third layer is the still point at the center, but also the center as the place of awakening to awe. So, in other words, in the third layer, you can have peace and you can have a beauty and serenity, but also the third layer and the center of life can be peaceful on one side. On another side, it's the source of creation and the place of awakening. It's the residence of the great spirit. Psychologically, they call it the deep self. People called it the soul of the individual connected to the soul of the world, the third layer, the individual soul essentially connected to the living soul of the world. That's their layer stuff. Um, so um, the third layer is the place of blessings. It's the place of awakenings. It's the place of creativity, but also the place of peace, centeredness, and calm. First layer, basic stuff that either works or doesn't work. Second layer, all the things that are dysfunctional and troublesome in the world. And the third place is the place that we want to be. In, you know, much of our longing is to be in that third place. And uh, so the good news is there's a third layer and everybody has access to it. The bad news is um, the only way to get to the third layer is by going through the second layer. A lot of people have trouble with this. It's, it's like the idea that oh, all the trouble in the world, why is it there? Why can it not be there? It's like all the meaningful stories are stories where the, the, the char main characters in the story struggle with things, face the struggles that they have, and that's what changes things. And so the, uh, the good news is the third layer is always nearby the second the bad news is that we have to go through that second layer, whatever that means to us, in order to get there. On the individual level, right now on the collective level, the third level, which would be the visions and awakening of a sense of a new world, uh, another world, a world more inclusive, a world more imaginative, a world more caring, that's possible, but we have to go through the second layer sense of the world now to get there. So this third layer is our soul inheritance, um, and we tend to seek it in art and in music, in love, in sensuality, in sexuality, in religion and spirituality, in meditation, in healing, in laughter, on vacations, on pilgrimages. All of those things in their own way are doorways into the third layer. I'm just trying to say that it's nearby, it's a natural inheritance of the human soul, and it's something that is calling to us all the time. Um, I will mention another problem with the third layer, which is that, well, the second layer, we can find our way there in a certain way on a given occasion, and we may not be able to go back through it that way again. The, the doorway to the third layer is a moving thing. So a person has a practice and the practice opens up this third layer and they get realization, they get some kind of uh, wonder, they get inspiration, they get peace, they get whatever they get. And then the next time they go, it doesn't work that way. Something else has to happen because it's a living process and we change and just as we change, the doorway moves. I hope that makes sense. Because some people will say, well, you know, I, I had a good experience and then it was gone and I couldn't get it back again. Well, it's nearby. We just have to find a doorway by changing ourselves. Um, I'm going to restate, you can't go directly from first layer to the third layer. The second layer is the place of awakening. It's the middle ground of rite of passage. It's the dramatic territory of initiation. <laughs>